Welcome to Watch Me Code Q&A. A friend of mine recently asked me a question about constructor functions in JavaScript. He sent me a couple of messages on Twitter saying that he was a little bit confused about constructors returning a new object, but still using the new keyword with that original constructor function that he was calling. And he wanted to avoid creating an object in his constructor function and use the this object that was inside of his constructor function instead of the object that he was creating in that constructor function. All right, if that's a little bit confusing, hopefully this code that he sent along will make things a little more easy to understand. So what he's doing here is he's got this background function that he's using as a constructor function. You can see down below here that he is calling new background and passing in another object that has some settings that he needs. But within this background constructor function, he's then creating a new instance of another object, setting up some stuff on that particular object, an init method that has some values that it's setting, and then returning the object that he had created from within this constructor function. And so he's really wondering, why is he calling new on this background function, and then calling new from within the background function to get this enhanced sprite object, which he is returning from the background function. So I wanted to take a few minutes here and look at this a little closer to see what's really going on, not necessarily by looking at his code in this file, but by starting from scratch with some simple constructor functions to see how this is actually going to behave. To get started then, I'm gonna head over to this index.js file, which is empty, and I'm gonna create an empty background object. Uh, and I'm gonna create an empty background function that'll simulate what my friend was doing in his code. So I'll say function background, and right now it's not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna say var background lowercase b equals new background. And then I'm gonna console.log the background instance, checking to see if it is an instance of the background type. Now when I head over to my console and I run this, we can see that it is an instance of the background type. Pretty standard stuff for JavaScript here. I'm just creating a new constructor function called background, instantiating an instance of that object, and then of course it is an instance of the background object type. But what my friend has going on here is this enhanced sprite object that's being created inside of his background. So I'm gonna create an enhanced sprite. And then from within the background, I'm gonna say var sprite equals new enhanced sprite. He does some stuff in here like setting a sprite.init function and then he returns the sprite object. So now what's gonna happen when I create the instance of this background and then check to see if it is an instance of background? Go back to the console and run that, and it is no longer an instance of the background type. So what's happening here is when I'm creating this new background instance, we are getting a background instance object we are getting a background object instance right here. There's no question about that. But what's going on inside of this background constructor function is that we're creating a different object instance, which is perfectly fine, totally legitimate. I do this on a pretty regular basis where I have a constructor function create other objects and set those objects up to do things for me. The thing that makes this different though is returning this sprite instance from this background object. When you do that inside of a constructor function, and this is a constructor function because we are using the new keyword right here, that's essentially what makes this a constructor function. When you return an object from a constructor function, the constructor function will return that object instead of the one that it had created initially. So we can see what's going on a little more by examining this inside of the background function. So I can say console.log this instance of background. And the first thing that I'll see when I run this index.js again is true. 
And that's happening because this inside of my background function is an instance of the background type. However, the second console.log is returning false because I'm returning the sprite object from the background constructor function. So I'm getting an instance of a enhanced sprite instead of, an in, instead of the background. And I can verify that by saying console.log background instance of enhanced sprite. Run that again, and we can see that yes, in fact, this is an enhanced sprite instance. So back to the original question then, how can my friend use this background function as a constructor function without having to call new sprite and new background around this? Well, in this case, the answer is actually pretty simple. You really don't need to use the new keyword on this background function. This function called this background function is essentially a factory. It's taking in some information here, constructing a new object, and then returning that object to you. So I can change up my code as well and get rid of this new on the new background, and this is no longer a constructor function. This is just a standard function call here. But I'm going to leave all of these console.logs in here and we're going to see what and we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to head back over to the console, run this again. And we see false twice instead of just once now. The first instance of false comes from this console.log where I'm checking if this is an instance of background. Well, this no longer points to an instance of background because I'm not using the new keyword on this function call. I no longer have an instance of a background type. I now have the default value of this, which is going to be something different in Node.js versus a browser window versus other environments, depending on a number of other things. But the point is, this inside of this function is no longer an instance of background because I am not using the new keyword on background right here. So I can get rid of that knowing that we no longer have a background instance. Now down below, we have two more checks. The second one also returns false, and then the third one continues to return true. That's expected. That's what we had previously, and that's what I expected to see still. Background, the object that we received from our factory function, is not an instance of the background type because we did not use new on the background function and because we are not getting an instance of this background type. We are getting an instance of this enhanced sprite type, which is what we were previously getting. So these two lines of code really haven't changed in their output because we're not getting a background instance, but we are getting an enhanced sprite instance. So in the case of my friend's code here, he really doesn't need to use the new keyword on this background call right here. He could just say background as a function, passing in the scene object, and it will still return the sprite as expected. That brings up a question though of, why would you even bother wrapping this sprite inside of this background function? Well, there's a number of reasons for that, including simplifying the API. You can see that there are a number of things going on inside of this background function. There's some background image. There's looks like there's what looks like a height and a width being set right here. There's this init function being set up with various things inside of it. And then finally returning the sprite, of course. This background function is essentially a factory that is wrapping up all of these other details so that when you're creating a new background, you don't need to worry about the rest of these details. The background function is encapsulating that for you. It's acting as a factory because it's creating another object for you based on what you pass in, but it's also encapsulating some code and configuration of the actual object that is being returned. And that's definitely a valuable thing. I like having wrapping functions like this to simplify APIs for me at times. It makes it easier to get things done and to have common functionality like creating multiple backgrounds throughout your application if you needed to do that. And this becomes especially useful when you want to create private variables. For example, I could go back into my code here and I can say var b equals some object foo bar right here. And now inside of my init function, I can say console.log b.foo from this sprite.init. So down below here, I can say background.init 
And when I run this in my console, we end up seeing bar printed out on the console because of this console.log inside of the sprite.init function right here. So what's happening here? Well, I'm basically using the background function as a wrapper to create a private variable called b. This b object has a foo attribute with the bar value. I'm then creating this sprite function object. I'm then creating this sprite instance right here, assigning a function called sprite.init to this sprite and using a closure around the b object to get access to b.foo. Now, when I return sprite from this background function, I do have a proper instance of this enhanced sprite object. And since this enhanced sprite object has this init function with this b.foo closure, I can say background.init because I have a sprite, because I have an enhanced sprite with the init function being returned. And since I have that function, and since I have a closure around this b variable, the init function is allowed to log b.foo. However, no other code has access to this b variable. I've created a variable that is locally scoped to this background function and provided access through a closure to the sprite, to the enhanced sprite object and the init function right here. But nothing else in this code has access to that function. So if you're looking for a way to create private variables, something that your object instance has access to, but nothing else will have access to, you can use wrapping functions like this to create private variables and then use closures like this to get access to those private variables from your object instance. Hopefully that clears up some of the confusion around this original code that my friend sent me and and helps to shed light on whether or not you actually need to use the new keyword on this background function versus just having it called as a factory function that is returning this enhanced sprite instance. And if you'd like to know more information about how all of this works, check out watchmecode.net and scroll down to the bottom here where you'll find this JavaScript fundamentals bundle. This bundle includes several different screencasts that will cover all of the material that I've shown you here, plus a lot more. You'll see variable scope in JavaScript where I talk about creating private variables. You'll see the context of this in JavaScript where I do show you constructor functions and how constructor functions change the value of this. And then you'll see JavaScript objects and prototypes, which covers a lot more about prototypes, prototypal inheritance, and creating objects in JavaScript. You'll also see more information about the fundamentals of JavaScript in this bundle. So check it out at watchmecode.net and hit the JavaScript fundamentals in the bundle section down below. And you'll get all this great information about JavaScript and everything that I've shown you in this quick Q&A episode.